Hey everyone, in this tutorial I will be teaching you on how to control this rectangle by using your keyboard. By controlling, I mean that you'll be able to move this rectangle to many positions on the screen of the program. So far what we have in this program is that we've created the rectangle and we set the color of the rectangle to red. We've also created yeah, we also created the J frame of the program. And we added the J panel onto the J frame. Yeah, this class extended the J panel. And we also implemented the action listener. So make sure that you have all these libraries imported. We use this timer object for animation. If you don't know what this really does technically, then I suggest you to watch my last tutorial. This X variable represents the position of the rectangle horizontally. So we set this as zero. So that means that this rectangle will be starting out on the far left side of the window. This Y represents the position of this rectangle vertically and we set this to zero. So that means that this rectangle will be starting out on the top left corner of the program or the window. And the VELX represents the speed of the rectangle horizontally. We set, we set this as zero because the users didn't tell Java to move it yet. And the VELY represents the speed of the rectangle vertically. We set this as zero also because the users didn't tell Java to move it yet. And we use this uh, tm, tm start to uh, start the timer so we can begin the animation process once the user used their keyboard to move the, uh, the rectangle. So yeah, looks like we're ready to get started. So yeah, we also have to uh, implement another interface, which is the key listener. And this right here is the interface where we can use so Java can read what the users are pressing on the keyboard or typing or releasing on the keyboard. So yes, make sure that you import the Java uh, key listener. Once you get that done, then now let's use this constructor. In order to use this uh, key listener onto this program, we have to type in add key listener. Open and close parentheses and semicolon. And we type in this. This right here is, a, is referring to this right here. The reason why this is not referring to this it's because that this method is really meant for this, not for this. So that's why there's no interference with the to this. And this timer object is meant for the action listener. So that's why they're not inter interfering each other. Once you get that done, then let's tell Java that we want to enable the key listener onto this program. So yeah, you type in set focusable in um, parentheses and type in true because we do want to enable the key listener so that's why it says see, uh, set focusable and we set that as true and the next one type in set focus traversal keys enabled it's a really long method and set that to false because we want we won't be using the shift or tab key at all so that's why we set that yeah we set this as false and now let's work with the action listener 
let's begin uh, still over here let's make the method action performed here so yeah if you type in public void action performed action event e and we ready to have the action event imported from the Java library inside of this method we'll be using these variables so yeah so type in x equals x plus velocity x so what we're telling Java is that the x's are initially to zero but like if the users like move something or press the button on the keyboard and let me use the arrow keys for the example if I press up or press R or not R press right or left then that number will be saying alright let's say 1 plus 0 and that new X value will be 1 and if I kept pressing down on the keyboard then it will be like 1 plus 1 equals 2 so that's the new X value so yeah if you don't understand what I just said then yeah watch my last tutorial because in that video I taught you how to, how to do this and then now let's do the same thing for y y equals y plus v e l y yeah this right here is the same thing what we did for x initially this y is zero so like if I press the up or down key then it'll be like 1 plus 0 equals 1 for new y value and so on and now we use the method repaint if you don't know what repaint does then yeah watch my last tutorial because I went over that too and yeah after you get that done then let's type in the method for the key listener so yeah type in public void key pressed it's when the users press down onto the keyboard and we type in key event e like we did for the action listener action event e but key event e is different we also have to import the key events so now we have this library so make sure that you have this library imported so we can use the key event alright well now let's do the fun part alright well now we have to type in int c equals e dot get key code and this right here gets the code from the keyboard or the buttons on your keyboard each button yeah, each buttons are assigned to each code. So like when the user press the arrow key for an example, like the up key, then it has a special coding value. So we use the int C so we can retrieve the information from the get key code. And now we use the int C method or not method variable so we can use that as the if else statement or if statements I mean. We will only use the if statements because you know the users can press in multiple keys in a certain amount of time so the if statements will be good for this so type in C equals key event key event dot and this is the code for the up key or let's use the left key first so VK underscore left that's the special code for the, the left arrow key on your keyboard. If that is pressed, then let's use the VELX, the velocity, set that to negative. Negative 1. Let's do the speed of negative 1. And the reason why we're doing negative 1 on the left side, like when you, once you're going left, is because that when you're going left, of the screen you you're taking the negative value 
If you go and write, then you're using the positive value. So, hope you underst understood what I just said. And let's use velocity y to 0 because we didn't mess with the up or down key. And now let's do the same thing for the up key. If c equals key event, let's do um, the code is the same thing vk, but this time it'll be up. If uh, key event up, if you're pressing up, then yeah, let's use the vx to zero and vel y set that to negative one. If you're going up, that means it'll be in a negative value. If it's going down, then that'll be the positive value. So semicolon that, and now let's do the right key, the arrow key. So uh, C dot e e key event. Let's do V K same thing. Underscore right. So yeah, V E L X. We use positive one if you're going right. V E L Y. Set that as zero since we're not messing with the up or down key. And finally, for the last one, type in if C equals key event and do VK down. And we set the VELX to zero for the negative or not, uh, not, not negative. Yeah, we set the X for zero since we're not moving or pressing the left or right key. And we use one. Since you're going down, it'll be positive. So far, we're done with this method. We have to type in two more methods. We don't really use that, but we have to type, in, type the method in in order to compile the program. So type in public void key typed uh, key event e. We really don't need that, and we have to make one more public void key released is when the user stop pressing onto the keyboard. We won't be needing that right now, but yeah. All right, once you type in all the methods, then it looks like we're ready to compile. So run this, and now you have a rectangle on the top left corner of the screen. If I move it with the right arrow key, then it'll move. If I go down, then go down. If I go left, it'll go left. The, problem, the only problem is that when I release the key, it kept on going. It keeps on going. So in order to uh, stop the rectangle when you release the key of uh, the keyboard, we use this method, the key release method. If you don't like your rectangle to be moving after you release the button. So yeah, you use uh, this method right here. And the only thing you have to do is set everything to zero. So VEL X equals zero and VEL Y equals zero. So yeah, once you get that done, then when you release the key, once the rectangle is moving, then it'll stop. So let's, let me move it. It stops, see? I let go, it stops. Yeah, there is a problem with this program because if I press any arrow keys holding down without letting it go, then this rectangle will appear outside of this screen. 
same goes for the other side and top and then bottom so in order to fix that we have to tweak up this method right here because this is the only method that actually animates the rectangles movement in order to yeah in order to place restrictions on a position then we have to type in the if statements so type in if x is less than 0 meaning if the rectangle is on the left side and outside of the screen then Java will perform this statement right here so we'll be telling Java that we want to stop the speed and reposition to 0 x equals 0 if we don't reposition the rectangles position then the speed will be at zero forever meaning that you can't even move at all so that's why we reposition the x value back to zero if it's less than zero let's do the same thing with the other side though let's do the x position but on the other side so if x is greater than let's do 530 my window is 600 so yeah you can change it if you want there's a pin on your program if your program is going to have a wall or something then yeah it's up to you but this program will have 530 that's the maximum it can go anything bigger than that then it will reposition the rectangle so yes this right here really means that if the rectangle is on the right side but outside of the screen so stop at the stop the velocity to zero and reposition the x to 530 now let's do the y's if y is less than zero meaning if the rectangle is outside of the screen and is at the top too then you have to stop the velocity equals zero and reposition the y to zero now let's do one more if y is greater than let's do 330 the height of the window is 400 so yeah like I said you can change the value anytime you want if yeah if that ever happens then we stop the velocity and we reposition the y to 330 so now we're done now let's run and see what happens yep it can't go off screen now so yes this concludes my tutorial over how to control your your rectangle by using your keyboard. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next tutorial.